What is up, everybody? Uh, CD Breach coming to you here today. We're talking about the XFL and uh, this stunning news uh, that I found uh, when I went to lunch today that basically Vince McMahon has shut down the XFL in 2020 yet once again. Uh, the news is that basically uh, the XFL has suspended all operations and laid off nearly all of its staff. I will tell you, one of the first things I did was I went to the XFL shop, and I tried to buy some merch from them, but really nothing is on clearance as of yet. More than likely, the person that ran the shop probably laid off as well. But once they get that stuff liquidated, it'd be cool to get like a roughneck shirt or um, you know just something to remember the 2020 season of the XFL because I can honestly tell you I knew that they were going to come in with expectations and I was hoping that those expectations would be met. I will tell you that honestly I think the 2020 version of the XFL will be remembered so much better than the 2001 version of the XFL. I think if the XFL could have played out this season uh, if it wasn't for the coronavirus uh, suspending games I think that easily XFL would have found a television deal for the 2021 season, and that is where they really would have broke loose and really started making money. If you would have looked at the way that the XFL drew out, um, the way they were going to launch this league, they did have excellent television with, I think, the NFL Network, CBS, and NBC, and those networks covered the production cost, but they didn't pay the XFL a dollar to put the games on television. So XFL was making money off of merch. They were making money off of um, selling tickets. They were making money off of like selling the, the, the parking at the stadium, the, uh, the, the, their portion of the uh, hot dogs, beer, stuff like that. That's, that's where they were making their money back. And, and I don't know if they were able to turn a profit in 2020. But I definitely think that once they got that television deal done, easily uh, they would have been there. Um, they didn't have like the uh, backlash from like newspapers, uh, XFL, when they were around in 2001. They would have to actually take out ads in the USA Today to put their sport scores in the paper and like the leaders and sort of have ads to when the next games would come. I think that they partnered up with the ESPN and ESPN honestly talked about XFL like it already was a major sport. I think that they really had a foothold uh, with NFL on uh, here, and I think it's pretty devastating that we're not going to have a, a, a football of XFL in 20 to 21. Um, with the AFL and the XFL basically starting up new leagues uh, in back-to-back -back seasons and those seasons not being able to finish, I think that there's not going to be another contender um, to run a football league here in America that's not named the NFL. Maybe the NFL can find a way to branch out and have some sort of a um, G League, minor league, something like that, and we can get spring football that way. Um, but I think even that's kind of risky with um, basically, you know, collegiate players already playing in college and... and um, you know, the NFL already being pretty devastating the way there is. But there's always going to be some guy that would be signed to some sort of a practice squad that just wants a chance to, to, to play, to be able to show that's why he does this and be able to, to, to have a place to do it. So, um, you know, I, I can easily say that any expectation that was set on the XFL in 2020 was definitely better than expected. The, the football play was better. Um, the production was better. Um, I, I thought they had a good league that, that I think was going to be able to find something as long as they didn't go USFL and try and sue the NFL to try and find a way to get into the league. I thought that they would be fine running football the way that they were doing it. I, th I thought the rules, I thought the play, er everything was great. And um, I don't know, maybe Vince is, is just getting old. If, if, if I can cross this back over into wrestling... It's going to be kind of weird because you could tell that when, you know, Eric Bischoff and Paul Heyman were hired into their roles, it was more than likely so Vince could be more of a, a hands-on with the XFL and be able to not have to be two places at one time, like when pay-per-views and football games uh, were being played. 
Um, you know, what does that mean from here on out? I think that, you know, when I bought WWE stock, when all this shit went down, I kind of was in my mind, you know, there's all these stories where Vince sells the company to NBC, to Fox, to Disney, um, to anybody out there that wants to own the WWE and try and make it bigger and better than it really is. Um, you know, maybe that's something that's really out there. XFL shutting down kind of makes me think there's there might be more smoke to this fire out there. We'll, we'll see what's going down. Because Vince, one thing I know about him is he, is he doesn't quit. You go back to that 30 for 30, uh, one of the things that really drove down in the end is that Vince really wanted the XFL in 2001 to continue on. And he almost continued it on with his own money. But the one thing that killed it was they didn't have a television deal. And he knew that he wasn't going to be able to play these games and have a league if nobody was able to be able to know about it without television. And that's why he shut it down. There's no real stories out there. People are really, really needing sports and content. People overpay for things like sports on television because most watch, it's must-watch television live. Many people don't watch sports taped or recorded. So, I mean, I think he could have got, really could, could got a really good television deal. And there's probably more things behind the curtain that we don't know about yet that is going to come out of this XFL deal for them closing before the 2021 season kickoff.